Hello and welcome back. Okay, are you ready? This time just you and me together, so we have to work very, very hard. Pregunta. Bueno, no es una pregunta, es una frase en, en español. Ay, él es una persona, mi amigo, es una persona sincera, franca y recta. Ven, vale. Muy bien, escuchad. My friend is a straightforward person. He's a very straightforward person. Straightforward. Straight means recto. This is a straight, a straight line. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line, and it's true. Not a crooked line, a straight line. So physically, straight means recto, and rectilínea, okay? Linear, it's straight, okay? Now, straight is used in many, many, many ways in English. Straight, in fact, the phonetic sound straight has two different spellings. One spelling is streicht, con la GHT al final, which is esto, recto, directo. Go, get straight to the point. I want to get straight to the point. Quiero ir directamente al grano, al punto en cuestión aquí. But straight has a different spelling, S-T-R-A-I-T, quitando la GH. Straight, eso es un estrecho, el estrecho de Gibraltar, the Strait of Gibraltar, the Strait of Malacca, uh, the Strait of Be the Bering Strait, the Strait of Bering. No decimos curiosamente the Strait of Bering, nunca. We say the Bering Strait which is the strait, that thin body of water that passes between the Arctic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean, between Siberia on the Russian, Asian side, and Alaska on the North American side. Okay, that's the Bering Strait. Imaginad que yo dijera, navegamos derecho por el estrecho. Se podría decir, um, teóricamente, we sailed straight through the strait. Okay. And it would be perfectly correct. Sounds strange, but it's correct. The Bering Strait separates Alaska from Asia. And some geologists think that those two land masses were connected physically 20 or 30,000 years ago, and that the Indians the North American Indians and the South American Indians crossed. Really, the Indians were from Asia, were from China, Korea, the uh, eastern parts of Siberia, and they migrated across the Bering Strait, which was a land bridge, no puente de tierra, a land bridge at that time. I don't know if this is true. And then migrated down into North America, Central America, South America, all the way to the Patagonia. Okay, uh, maybe it's true, maybe it's not. There are different, maybe it's true, maybe it's not. There are different uh, hypotheses and theories on how the Indians went to uh, Amer the Americas, uh, but that's not our question today. Our question today is language. But they crossed, and it's interesting. I remember when I was at college, when I was at college, Los Britannicos dirían when I was at uni, at uni, which means at university, in um, inglés americano, at college, or in the university, I had a professor, uh, a philosophy professor, and his subject was uh, the philosophy of the Middle Ages in Europe, la filosofía de la Edad Media Europea, but he was from Korea, he was from South Korea. Which for me, which for me, which, lo cual, which for me was strange to, to have a class from a philosophy professor at the university level teaching European philosophy, and he was a Korean, but fine. He was a very good teacher, by the way. And he told us, the class, that the day before he had been at the dentist. He had gone to the dentist for a problem, and the dentist told him, he said, your jaw and your teeth are exactly alike the American Indians because this dentist had experience with uh, Comanches. There are a lot of Comanches in Texas, and uh, that's where I was going to the university. And, and he said it's exactly the same. So maybe it's true, of course, that the American Indians are um, ancestors. Well, the ancestors of the American Indians or the, uh, were from the Korean Peninsula in that area. 
Okay, and they crossed the Bering Strait, Strait, and uh, the connection between the Mediterranean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean, you pass through the Strait of Gibraltar, the Strait of Gibraltar, okay. The two pillars of Hercules, Pilares de Hercules, uh, one is the Rock of Gibraltar, aquí decís el Peñón de Gibraltar, decimos la Roca de Gibraltar, the Rock of Gibraltar, and I can't remember the name of the mountain on the other side, but when you're sailing from the Mediterranean into the Atlantic, crossing through the Strait of Gibraltar, you see these two big mountains. And in antiquity, in antiquity means in ancient times, in tiempos antiguos, these two were called los pilares de Hércules, the pillars, con doble de pillars, escrito literalmente, the pillars of Hercules, and that's the Strait of Gibraltar, the Strait of Gibraltar. All right, there are many straits. Probably the most important strait in the world is the Strait of Malacca. That's where 40 per 30 or 40 percent of all the um, maritime traffic, maritime traffic, tráfico marítimo, passes through the Strait of Malacca. And that's the strait between Sumatra, the island of Sumatra, which is part of Indonesia, and Malaysia, Mal Mal la peninsula Malaya, the Malayan Peninsula, which is part of Malaysia, and you have Singapore right there. And Singapore is one of the most important, Singapore is one of the most important ports in the world, one of the most active, if not possibly the most active port in the world. And there's so much shipping going through that area, and there are a lot of pirates in that area, too. It's not the safest place in the world. Okay, so, mi, mi amigo es una persona sincera, franca y recta. He is a straightforward person. Volviendo a straight, como recto, straight. Straight means directamente también. I want to speak straight to you, straight to you. I'm looking straight at you. I'm not looking at the, the floor technician or at the sound technician. I'm looking straight at the camera, and I'm looking straight at you. Okay, straight. Do you remember Elvis Presley? You ain't nothing but a hound dog. He was a rock and roll star. He was one of the early rock and roll phenomena, okay? And he became famous in 1956, I believe, 1955, 1956. Now, in the late 50s, I think about 1958, 59, he wrote a very famous song. Well, he interpreted, I don't know if he wrote the song or if he simply interpreted the song, but it was number one on the charts. I was about four or five years old when that happened, but I remember the song, Cartas de Amor, Directamente de Mi Corazón. Love letters straight from my heart. And I don't remember the rest of the lyrics, but it's a beautiful song. They keep us apart. Okay, love letters straight from my heart. Now, si dices straight, que es recto, okay? También, ojo, pelo liso, straight hair. O sea, literalmente en inglés decimos pelo recto, a diferencia del pelo ondulado o rizado. You have curly hair, wavy hair, and straight hair. People who have curly hair always prefer to have straight hair, always dream of having, dream of having, gerundio, eh? dream of having straight hair. And people who have straight hair don't necessarily dream of having wavy hair, but they would like to have a bit more body, cuerpo in their hair. So nobody's happy. Nunca lleva gusto de todos. So uh, nobody's happy with their hair, okay? But straight hair. Now, straight guion forward. Forward means hacia adelante. Recto hacia adelante. Es lo que es literalmente esta expresión. Straight forward. Pepe is a straightforward person. And it means in Spanish more or less persona sincera, recta y franca en el trato con las personas. Le ves venir porque siempre ha despecho descubierto. No oculta nada. No engaña a nadie. No es su afán. No quiere hacerlo. That's a straightforward person. It's always a pleasure uh, to deal with a straightforward person. Le ves venir. Okay. Straightforward. Okay. 
There's no, he's not hiding anything. He doesn't have a hidden agenda, una agenda oculta, we say, a hidden agenda. And you know what he wants. He explains it clearly, and you can see in his eyes and in the tone of his voice that he's a straightforward person, okay? And uh, it's always a delight, a delight. Un deleite, se dice en inglés, es, un, es encantador. It's always a delight uh, to do business with straightforward people because it's easy and productive. Not everybody is straightforward, eh? Not everybody is straightforward. Okay, the next one, la habitación. Esta habitación está un poco cargada. All right. This room is a bit stuffy. Yeah, I think we need to open the door, open the window. La, la ambiente aquí está un poco cargado. The atmosphere is a bit stuffy. Ambiente, atmosphere. Atmosphere. Uh, there are three words que tienen que ver con ambientes. Con el, el clima. El clima en esta empresa no es muy buena. The climate. All right. In this company. The corporate climate. The climate in the factory. Climate. Climate can be literal. El clima en España es seca en general en muchas zonas. The climate is dry by nature. But also the climate in this organization. But y ante la duda siempre atmosphere. The atmosphere. Now the ambiance, escrito ambiente, ambiente, pero se, que es el ambiente. Uh, the ambiance es una importación. Bueno, no es una importación, es una palabra que si, siempre ha existido en inglés, pero se ha hecho, uh, se ha puesto de moda en los últimos 30 años. Ambiance. Uh, perhaps because of French and Spanish. Ambiente, ambiance. And, um, but still, the best word is atmosphere. The atmosphere in this organization is positive. It's a positive atmosphere. It's a, it's a straightforward, forward-looking atmosphere. Everybody is motivated. Everybody believes in our products and in our markets. And everybody is, uh, is uh, positive about the future. So the atmosphere is very positive here. And in some companies, the atmosphere is not so positive. Okay. Now, the atmosphere is also el atmosfera, o el ambiente físico aquí. And in this room, oh, the lights. All these lights that are on me. My God, I, ca I can't see you very well. And it's getting hot. It's getting stuffy. All right, stuffy. And I, I say to the floor technician, can't we open a window? And he says, no, after the program. Okay, well, after the program, fine. We can't open a window. But it's a bit stuffy. Stuffy. Cuando el ambiente está cargado, se dice stuffy. S-T-U-F-F-Y. Why? Why? Now, it's based on the word stuff. Now, stuff is a very, very important word in English. And it's a word that is impossible, really, to translate to Spanish exactly. And so you just have to gain a feeling for the word. Okay, but let's look at the physical. Stuff. Okay, stuff. Stuffing. Vamos a poner después de la doble F una ING. Stuffing has two meanings. El relleno. Or, for example, pavo, relleno de algo. El relleno is stuffing. The stuffing. Some people at Thanksgiving in the United States, el Día de Acción de Gracias, Thanksgiving Day, turkey is, of course, uh, normally served. It's a very important um, holiday in the United States. Here in Spain, and in most Western countries, including the United States, turkey is also served on Christmas Day. All right, to celebrate Christmas, or on Christmas Eve. La noche buena, decís aquí. In English, decimos Christmas Eve. 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 De ahí viene la palabra evening. Porque en Engl English, Eve, además de la palabra, la, el nombre Eva para mujeres, Eve. Eve means víspera de. Christmas Eve is víspera de día de Navidad. New Year's Eve, noche vieja, is víspera del año nuevo. Eve. Porque se puede decir, we are on the eve of a new, of a new dawn. Okay, dawn is amanecer. Estamos en la víspera. Víspera de una, un nuevo amanecer tecnológico o político en este, en este continente, for example. We are on the eve of a new era, una nueva era. Okay, on the eve. So it can be used figuratively. Víspera de. De ahí viene la palabra evening. Evening, literalmente, remontando sus orígenes, es víspera del día siguiente. Evening. All right. So, 
on Christmas Eve or on Christmas Day, people eat turkey. And uh, some people don't like turkey. They find it a bit dry. Okay. I don't because my wife prepares the turkey very well. My wife has a syringe. Jeringa, jeringuilla. And she puts the, in the syringe, syringe, uh, she puts a bit of, of juice, jugo de carne, juice, or de ave, mixed sometimes with a bit of cognac or something, and she injects it into the turkey in different places. So I have a drunk turkey. But still, it's, 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 it's tasty, sabroso, taste. Taste is saborear o catar algo o probar. Taste it. Para sacarle el sabor, to taste. All right? To find the flavor. And so the turkey is not dry when my wife makes it this way. And it's quite tasty. It really is. It's quite tasty. Now, some people don't like turkey and they prefer to eat the stuffing, el relleno que han metido dentro. That's the stuffing. Okay? So, to stuff means insertar relleno, vamos. Okay, that's one possibility. Stuffing also is cuando se disecan los animales, los taxidermistas. A taxidermist works closely with hunters. Hunters go hunting, they kill a trophy, a big game trophy or a small game trophy. A big game trophy is a trofeo de caza mayor. Trophies, el venado, you know, the, the deer. You have, I think, in Spain there are eight big game trophies. I think there are eight. I'm not a hunter, and I'm not, I'm not crazy about hunting. But I think in Spain there are eight big game trophies. Yes, you have the Spanish ibex, beautiful animal, uh, which the hunters call la capra hispanica. It's the, the big goat in the mountains in Spain. You have the uh, wild boar. Wild boar is el jabalí. Wild is salvaje. Boar, escrito boar, boar, is a uh, jabalí. Dangerous animal, be careful. And then you have other types of animals. You have the Rebeco del Cantabrico and the Pirineo up in the, it's called the chamois. And there are eight trophies. Now, then you have small game, que es caza menor. Big game, como partido grande, partido pequeño. Okay, it's an interesting expression. Big game hunting, la caza mayor. Small game hun hunting, la caza menor. Now, some hunters, when they bag a trophy or kill a trophy, the poor animal, um, they take the animal to a taxidermist, and the taxidermist stuffs the animal. He takes, he takes off the, the inside of the animal, really, and just takes the, the uh, skin and the fur and then puts stuffing inside. So they stuff the animal and put the head on the wall or the entire animal in your living room if you're rich and have a big living room and you want to presumir, uh, you want to show off your trophies, okay? To show off your trophies, okay? Yeah, I'm back. Uh, and some people do this. I have met, I have given class personally to uh, quite a few people involved in the world of hunting. That's why I know a little bit about hunting. And uh, some of them like to show off their trophies. To show off is a presumir enseñando. To brag, B-R-A-G, is presumir hablando. Yo soy el mejor profesor de inglés de este país. Estoy jactándome, estoy presumiendo de ser el mejor. Okay. Uh, pero con palabras. Eso es to brag or to boast. Boas de escrito. Boast. Pero se dice más brag cuando es pesado, cuando alguien lo hace de forma pesada. Es to brag. Oh, es que no le aguanto. Siempre está jactándose. Siempre está presumiendo de ser el mejor profesor de este país. He's always bragging. Es un pesado. He's a pain in the neck. Por cierto, también se puede decir a pain in the posterior, a pain in the ass. He's a pain in the neck. He's always bragging. Okay. So to brag. B-R-A-G. Muy sencillo. Brag. ¿Cómo suena? Okay. Como braga con la fuera. Brag is jactarse o presumir verbalmente. To show off. To show, of course, is mostrar, enseñar. But to show off, dos palabras, con doble F en off, eso es presumir enseñando. Okay, mira, mira, 
Yo tengo mil, mil, mil micrófono, me costó mil euros. Y esto me costó diez mil euros, el mejor ordenador del país. I'm showing off in my car. Look at my beautiful car. Eh? All right, I'm showing off. Okay. And so um, animals, trophies, hunter, hunters stuff, take their animals, take the animals they kill to the taxidermist and the taxidermist stuffs the animals. Okay, stuff. Stuff. Stuff means materia también. Cosas en general. For example, uh, before this class, before this segment, one of the technicians came and poured something into this cup. And it's not water. I don't know what it is. And so I, I haven't taken a sip. Sip is un sorbo. I haven't taken a sip from the cup. And I asked Alberto, I said, Alberto, what is this stuff? He says, no, drink it, it's good. I'm not going to drink this stuff. It doesn't look, it's, it's purple. It's a strange color. But it's good stuff, drink it. And finally, I said, well, it looks horrible. And he, Albert said, drink it, try it. Pruébalo, te gustará, try it, you'll like it. And so finally, I got up, I got up the courage. Reuní el, el valor, se dice. Se dice to get up, como levantarse por la mañana. I got up the courage, y se dice courage, coraje, en inglés se escribe, que es valor, no es coraje, no es valor. I got up the courage to try it. And I, hmm, hey, this is good stuff. What is this stuff? What is this stuff? Esta sustancia, esta materia, esta cosa. All right, we say stuff. All right. And so it's very common. And it can be used positively or it can be used negatively. All right, so, aquí, sin embargo, se usa una forma un poco distinta. Ambiente cargado. It's stuffy in this room. It's a very common expression. And it often happens uh, that you have meetings in a room with several people. And simply the animal heat, you know, produces a, a change in the atmosphere. And if the room doesn't have good ventilation, if the air doesn't circulate well, the room can become stuffy. The room can become stuffy. And you say, oh, it's a bit stuffy in the room. Can we open a window? And the, uh, the person who is chairing the meeting or the person who is presiding over the meeting, or the person who is leading the meeting, formas múltiples, es decir, presidir una reunión, to preside over the president. Ahí viene la palabra pre presidente, viene presidir. El presidente preside. Okay, the president presides over the meeting, and, um, or he chairs the meeting. Eso sí es más formal. ¿Quién va a dirigir la reunión? Who is going to chair the meeting? Usando la palabra silla. Literalmente, ¿quién va a sillar la reunión? To chair the meeting. De ahí viene la palabra chairman. El presidente del consejo de administración de una empresa es el chairman. The chairman of the board. Okay. And if the chairman of the board is in the meeting and the chairman of the board is hot, he can say, uh, Paco, can you open the window, please? And Paco says, well, outside they're doing some civil works and there's a jackhammer. It's making a lot of noise. Okay, well, don't worry but it gets stuffy and hot. So, el ambiente aquí está un poco cargado. The atmosphere is a bit stuffy. Could you please open the window? All right. Could you please open the window? We have one minute left. What can we do in one minute? We have one minute left. Well, I can go back over. I can go back over, volver a repasar, to go back over the, old, the two sentences we have looked at today. Number one. Pepe is una persona sincera, franca y recta. Pepe is a straightforward person. And because he's a straightforward person, if he's in a meeting in a room in which the atmosphere is a bit stuffy, he's not afraid to say, excuse me, Mr. Jones, but the atmosphere here is a bit stuffy. Could we open the window for a moment? Straightforward people are usually not afraid to make logical or rational suggestions, okay? Straightforward. I consider myself a straightforward person. I tell you the truth. And I tell you that to learn English, you have to work. You have to study. You have to make an effort. Okay. I will not fool you, engañaros, telling you it's easy to learn English because it's not. It takes a lot of work.
But I'm here to help you and I will help you, okay? So thank you very much and see you again very soon. Bye-bye.